Hi there, my name is Dr. Leah O'Toole and I'm a lecturer and researcher in educational psychology at the Marino Institute of Education in Dublin, Ireland, an associated college of Trinity College. Today I hope to take you through a bioecological perspective on parental involvement in children's education. The importance of parental involvement in children's education is so well established by so much research that it represents one of the most agreed upon principles of good educational practice. Parental involvement is considered internationally to be an important indicator of good education systems. The partnership model is particularly pervasive, but is subject to critique as it may mask inequalities in practice. Often, the literature refers to parents as if they're all alike, overlooking socioeconomic, gender and cultural differences, for example. It is often assumed that all parents are equally well informed and have equal capacity to support their children's education. When educational interventions are designed based on this flawed perception, we may inadvertently reproduce the very inequalities we aim to address. Through intimidation, or simply not understanding what is required of them, some parents may not engage with initiatives for parental involvement. And deficit models can then arise, with educators believing that certain groups of parents don't care about their children's education, which couldn't be further from the truth. To avoid deficit thinking, we need appropriate theoretical frameworks to study these complexities. And this paper proposes Bronfenbrenner's bioecological model of human development as one such framework. Bronfenbrenner is best known for his 1979 treatise, highlighting contexts of children's development, from direct environmental impacts, the microsystem, to broader cultural factors, the macrosystem, and interactions between levels, the mesosystem and exosystem. This early work presented systems functioning as somewhat static, but the model is an evolving theoretical system, and its most up-to-date iteration, the bioecological model, incorporates the child's agency, time, both socio-historical and personal, the chronosystem, and greater emphasis on reciprocal, non-linear relationships between and within systems. This yields a dynamic framework for understanding complex processes. Its research design is known as the Process, Person, Context, Time, or PPCT approach, and it can help us avoid deficit perspectives because we see that there are more than just personal traits or preferences involved when people make complex choices like whether or not to engage with their children's education. This study of parental involvement took place in a case study primary school in Ireland, the three preschools that fed into it, and the two secondary schools into which it feeds. It used interviews, focus groups, observation and text analysis to access the experiences of participants. There were 163 participants in all, made up of teachers at preschool, primary and secondary level, and also children and parents. The graphic of the linked hands is used here to show that the study very much located the schools within their communities, and relevant community workers were also involved, such as staff of the local intercultural centre and also those working in the school completion programme. The bioecological model emphasises relationships or process in children's development, for example, those between parents and schools. Often, parents do not perceive schools to be as accessible as they perceive themselves to be, and when parents believe their involvement is not valued, they're less likely to engage. It's really necessary for teachers to be proactive in relationship building, since parents' proactivity may be limited by intimidation. As predicted by bioecological theory, participants in this research emphasise positive relationships between home and school. Many teachers highlighted proactive relationship building by schools and expressed recognition of parents' role in education. As a result, parents describe very positive relationships with open communication and a sense of feeling supported and listened to. Many personal circumstances may contribute to feelings of intimidation on behalf of parents. For example, the cultural capital of middle class parents generally matches that valued by schools, but homeschool relationships can be challenging for working class parents. There may also be barriers created through differing linguistic and cultural norms. Many approaches to partnership are actually based on socialisation, where schools attempt to shape parental attitudes and practices to meet the school's need. 
And this can lead to difficulties for parents in maintaining their own linguistic and cultural identity while also supporting their children to succeed at school. It's little wonder, therefore, that parents from minority backgrounds tend to be less involved in their children's education. Individual circumstances like employment may also impact on parental input, and parents with poor physical or mental health or minimum social supports may find engagement difficult. In this study, socioeconomic status did not appear to present the significant barrier predicted by the literature, and this may reflect the efforts made by the schools involved to overcome these issues. Nevertheless, the impact of socioeconomic disjuncture and cultural capital was noted by some participants. One teacher said, it's a very middle class, working class way of doing things. We do things a certain way and we expect people to fit into our way of doing it. There's a huge fear and the school system hasn't changed a whole lot in terms of accessibility for certain people. Parents from various cultural backgrounds mirrored the literature regarding the challenges of maintaining their linguistic and cultural identity while supporting their children to succeed at school in Ireland. Some children appear to acculturate to the dominant culture at a faster rate than their parents and to reject the home language and culture as a result. This is really unfortunate given the cultural importance placed by many parents on children speaking their language. Teachers expressed empathy for the parents, but indicated that having a parent willing to speak English could be the key to supporting children with the language. However, the literature recommends that asking parents to speak the language of the dominant culture in the home should be avoided with regards to cultural identity and the potential for language loss. Parents' previous experience of education in this study also came forward in terms of their self-efficacy beliefs and thereby involvement. When schools were proactive in raising self-efficacy beliefs, the results were really transformative, in some cases leading to parents returning to education themselves. Opposing the literature, respondents indicated that fathers were generally as involved as mothers in the education of their children. With regard to context, consideration of family context is vital in understanding parental involvement. Respondents in this study confirmed that initiatives on parental involvement must be sensitive to different types of families. Adoption, foster care and single parent families were hi highlighted. Also, if a child had older siblings who already attended the school, parents found it much easier since they already knew the system. However, if an older sibling had difficulties in school, this could impact negatively. Unfortunately, some parents de developed a reputation that coloured teachers' perceptions of and interactions with them. School contexts are equally influential on parental involvement. Regarding contextual supports for parental involvement, preschools in this study depended on informal approaches, but at primary and secondary levels, supports became more structured. Significant time and effort were invested in relationship building with parents. The parents' classes, particularly English language classes in the primary school, were positively noted by many, in opposition to concerns in the literature about deficit perspectives inherent in such approaches. The primary school also presented parents with a literacy pack to encourage them to read with their child. Some parents came into classrooms to support lessons, and when children's standardised test scores led to concern, parents could learn literacy games and other educational approaches. There are also information days on aspects of the curriculum to support parents to help with homework. In many Irish schools, children line up outside to be brought to class by teachers and parents never enter the school. However, in this primary school, parents could take their children into classrooms, facilitating informal communication with teachers and making parents feel welcome. The secondary schools had parents associations and parent representatives on the boards of management. There were parents handbooks and an online e-portal system whereby parents could access information. The secondary schools also had allocated parents rooms which not only facilitated the logistics of parental involvement but also sent a powerful message of welcome. The primary and secondary schools both had homeschool community liaison teachers with the specific role of engaging with parents and they were highly valued by participants. A bioecological perspective also emphasises the impact of time on parental involvement. Consistent with the literature, parents in this study were more involved at preschool and primary level than at secondary level, but this was largely viewed as a developmental progression rather than a problem as such. 
Social norms around parental involvement were also identified as changing over time, with more expectations that parents should and could be involved. Many also noted the increasing involvement of grandparents nowadays, and in many cases parental involvement actually meant grandparental involvement. Using the lens of bioecological theory, specifically the PPCT approach, it becomes clear that the idea of parental involvement in education requires much greater critical analysis than is common in the literature at present, particularly with regards to diversity. This leads to a conception of parental empowerment rather than mere involvement, and it highlights the crucial role of contextual supports, and in particular positive relationships, in achieving genuine homeschool partnership. In a necessarily short piece, it is hard to give a full flavour of the range of literature available on this topic, but if you would like to learn more about Bronfenbrenner's work and how bioecological theory can frame and explicate complex social and educational processes, you might like to try out my recently published book entitled Introducing Bronfenbrenner, a guide for practitioners and students in early years education, which was written in conjunction with my co-authors Noreen Hayes and Anne-Marie Halfpenny. My contact details are on the final slide and I welcome any correspondence related to this presentation. Thanks for your attention.